Good morning, I'm Alex Smarty with Colton Noble. We're Lab Group 6B and joining us today are special guests uh, Jeff Knoffel and Najee Barakat. And today we're doing Lab 8, which is shear plate interferometer and optical testing. And I'm going to briefly talk about uh, shear plates, how they work, and what they do. So over here, uh, we have an example of a, a non-wedged shear plate, and this works basically the same as a wedged shear plate, where we have collimated light coming in, and the reflection off the front surface of the glass, and the reflection off the back surface of the glass interfere on the, uh, the viewing screen in the area here where they overlap. Um, with a non, with a wedged shear plate, uh, the only difference is that the glass here has some slight angle to it, and what that gives us is on the viewing screen, uh, our wave fronts are slightly at a different angle from the viewing screen, so we, we're seeing different parts of the wave interfere, and that gives us a better sensitivity to tilt and defocus, which we will show later in the lab. Hi. I'm going to show you our initial setup for the lab today. Um, and basically, all we're trying to do is to get a collimated beam to go through the shear plate so that we can view the fringes on the screen like, um, like Alex talked about in, uh, before. And so we have our standard helium neon laser, spatial filter to clean the beam. We have a 200 millimeter focal length singlet, which is collimating the beam. And the, the non-wedge shear plate is right here. And the more interesting stuff you can see is um, right over here um, where we've got the fringes. And as you can see, We've got some fringes in there right now, and in the non-wedge shear plate, like Alex discussed, you're going to see the fringes as we focus and defocus the 200 millimeter lens that they um, contract and expand. And so we know that when we take this to our best null, that we have collimated light. Which is, this is about the best null we have here, and there's some residual spherical aberration since this is a, uh, a singlet. Hi, I'm Jeff Knopfel. I'm normally in lab group 4B. This, now we're trying to add coma to our system, and to do that we know that coma is an off-axis aberration. So to do that we used our defocus to put us back at our null fringe, and then we use our uh, linear translation stage to add decenter to it. And so as we move off-axis, you can see that we're adding coma because we're going through coma fringes. Hi, I'm Najee Barakat. I'm normally in group, lab group for A, and, but I'm just visiting this week. So for this section, we've changed the orientation of the lab so now that the curved surface is facing towards the laser. Uh, and with this orientation, we're going to get more aberrations than we did in the previous orientation. So if you look at the interferogram, uh, you see that sphere collaboration is, is more apparent in this uh, setup. So now I'm going to defocus the lens. And we see that it's, the sensitivity is pretty much the same as it was before. That's because the focus is power, and that does not uh, depend on the orientation of the lens. So now I'm going to move it back to the null fringe. I can get it there. And now I'm going to decenter the lens, and we're going to see this, uh, the coma cycle through here. Hi, so for this part, we're using a reference lens after our shear plate where we are coming back through a mirror on this side, which we have the focus of the mirror at the front focus of, uh, the focus of our lens at the front focus of our mirror, so that our we have collimated light coming back through our shear plate. So what we can do is we can add defocus to our mirror, and what this does is it changes the fringe angle on the screen. So now if I move back to our null, then I can add tilt to it as well, and what this does is, as you can see, we're cycling through our fringes. What we're also doing when we cycle through our fringes is we're changing our angle. And this is because to tilt the mirror we have to push the mirror a little bit, and so we're adding defocus. Then we can take that defocus out using our lateral translation along the z-axis and come back to what appears to be collimated. But this is still, we, can, we know that there's tilt in this because those fringe orders, though they appear the same, are different orders than the ones we had previously. All right, I'm just going to wrap things up here. This is the last part of the lab. We've swapped out the reference lens for our test lens, which has a lot more aberrations, and we've oriented it for maximum aberration content. And uh, the distance between our lens and mirror is, once again, the sum of their focal length. So if we look on our test plate here, uh, this is what we see at our best focus. As we add defocus, uh, we see there's a lot of spherical aberration. If we go back to uh, best focus, we're now going to see what happens when we do the center. 
When we decenter in X with this orientation, which I'm doing right now, we see virtually nothing happening. But when we see decenter in Y, I'm going to try and do this slowly, we see that the fringes start to cycle. And that's because of the orientation of our shear plate. We're seeing the effects of coma as we go off axis. That's it for Lab 8 uh, with uh, Alex, Colton, Jeff, and Najee. We'll see you next week.